So the iPhone 15 has been out for a little bit over a month and honestly, despite it having new titanium on the Pro models and Dynamic Island across the lineup, it doesn't look that much different from the previous three to four models. Why is that? Is it a lack of innovation that a lot of critics claim? Is it the mentality of if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Has Apple perfected the iPhone? I'm not sure about any of those claims, but one thing I'm sure about is that Apple's not the only one doing it. New phones from Google, Samsung, OnePlus, and even the Nothing phone all look kind of similar to their previous iterations. And besides foldable phones, we really haven't seen any new innovations that's really changing the game. And foldable phones, in my opinion, aren't really changing the game either. I have more thoughts on that later, but really all of this makes me wonder. 10 years from now, will our phones basically look the same with a touch screen on the front and the cameras on the back? Or will there be new innovations that either change the design of the phone or the versatility of the phone, the capabilities of the cameras, or just making these phones easier to use and more useful in our day-to-day -day lives? It's a lot to talk about, so let's talk tech. I'm Asian with Ardently Tech. Let me start off by saying yes, I know our smartphones haven't been changing exteriorly too much, but we have to appreciate the computing and software building that's been built into these phones that where they're able to process and do some crazy computing when it comes to photography and just everyday use and workload. Apple's claiming that the iPhone 15 Pro is gonna be one of the best gaming phones, which is kind of crazy. Google is doing some really great things with their photo processing and even video processing. We can't look past those, but I feel like I'm gonna lean a little bit more into the external parts of phones because that is the first thing we see. Right? And don't get me wrong, I love that the, all these major companies like Apple, Google, and Samsung kind of have their design language of their phones to make them, at first glance, noticeably an iPhone or noticeably a Google Pixel phone or noticeably a Samsung Galaxy phone. With the iPhones, you're gonna get that square camera bump with the either two or three camera lenses, depending if you get the regular or the pro. With the Google Pixels, you're gonna get the little visor or the bandana, as I like to see it as. And for the Samsung Galaxies, you get the camera lenses kind of arranged in a three stack, which is also really great. It feels like around 2016 or 2017, phones haven't really changed that much. Externally, the differences between each model has been maybe a little bit less bezel on the front display, better cameras on the back, either better battery life or better computing power, which again, is not bad, but it's just, it's the same. A standardized rectangular phone with a touch screen and cameras in the back. Nothing wrong with it. Yes, we do have foldable phones now and sure, cool, but I really feel like it's more of a gimmicky feature that just, that leans into the nostalgia of having a flip phone rather than something that's actually useful, innovative, and necessary. I mean, just look at this ad for the Samsung Flip 4. They have people in the commercial recording video like a VHS camera, really hitting that nostalgia feature again. And again, is that really necessary? No, is it cool? Yeah, it's kind of cool but it's just not a necessary innovation because I think there is a difference between necessary innovations and cool innovations. And I think this is just a cool innovation, not a necessary one. But honestly, I could be completely off base and completely wrong about that. And maybe foldable phones are the future. This is just coming from someone who's only used the foldable phones through friends who own them. And I got to try them out for a little bit, but that's not a lived experience. So. Again, you might feel otherwise and that's totally fine and I could be wrong and that's totally fine. Point is, I think there's a few necessary innovations that each phone has that phones didn't used to have. And I think it'd be important to kind of look back at the history of phones and what necessary innovations are. I kind of thought of 10 necessary innovations that we've had in smartphones and in phones in general since the beginning of mobile phones. So let's go back in time and, and talk about those. But first, one essential thing is having good, reliable service. That's why we partner with Mint Mobile for today's video. And if you didn't know, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service for as little as $15 a month. And currently as a special offer that expires on October 31st, you can get their unlimited plan that's usually $30 for 50% off. That's $15 a month for the first three months of their unlimited plan. If you want to get started and try it out today, you can use our link in our description, mintmobile.com slash ardently, or use this QR code right here. Not only are they on the nation's largest 5G network, switching to Mint is extremely easy. With their eSIM compatibility, you can switch to Mint Mobile in 15 minutes or less. I have Mint Mobile on my cellular iPad mini and I absolutely love it. Again, this special offer expires on October 31st, 2023. So if you want to try their unlimited plan, 
plan for $15 a month for the first three months, you have to act now. Again, a link is in the bio, mintmobile.com slash ardently or use this QR code here. So before we go further in talking about what the future of phones will look like, let's go back and talk about the past. As I mentioned, internet connectivity is probably one of the first things that you need from any phone. And the first phone to do that was the Nokia 9000 communicator back in 1996. It was the first one that had connection to the internet. It is much less than what we have today, but it was the first one to have it. What was the first phone with a color display? Well, there was actually a couple. One was this, the Simons S10 in 1998 had RGB colors, but the first one with an LCD display, which became more common theme amongst phones, was the Nokia 9210 communicator in 2000. And what's a cell phone without a camera? So what was the first one with a camera? It was the Samsung SCH V200 in 2000, but it was only released in South Korea as I understood in my research. In 2002, the Sanyo SCP5300 dropped in the United States with the first camera on a phone. And the first phone to take video recording, which is absolutely essential for everyday use now, is the Nokia N95 in 2007. And what was the first phone with a touchscreen? Some may say the 1992 IBM Simon. Yes, it did. It had a stylus and all that jazz. And then there was the LG Prada that released just before the iPhone. So I think technically the LG Prada is the first one to have the touchscreen phone, but a little bit later, the first iPhone came out in 2007. How about the first front-facing camera? In 1999, actually, there was a company that made the Kyocera Visual Phone VP210. Obviously, it didn't catch on until the iPhone 4 in 2010 with a front-facing camera. The first phone to have video calling was also the iPhone 4 in 2010, but back in 2001, a Sony phone, the Sony Ericsson Z1010 actually had video calling, which is pretty interesting. Again, didn't catch on till the iPhone's front-facing camera in 2010. The first phone that had 4K recording capabilities was actually the Acer Liquid S2 in 2013. It only could record in 4K 24 frames per second. In that same year, the Galaxy Note 3 came out with 4K 30 frames per second. Now this is a little bit debatable, but the second camera on a phone. I think it's a really essential thing, the wide angle telephoto, whatever lens that is that's separate from the main camera, I think has become a staple in most phones, in most smartphones. Technically, the first phone to do that was the HTC Evo 3D in 2011, but it didn't really catch on until the LG G5 and the Huawei P9 and P9 Plus back in 2016. And both of those came with dual cameras in the back of the phone. And the last necessary innovation, I think, was a more all touch screen display, which is kind of the standard nowadays. Days. There's a lot less bezel or no bezel at all. And for those who don't know what a bezel is, it's just that little black part around that, that isn't a touch screen. But in 2016 and 2018, companies started to stretch that limitations of the screen further and further away from removing the buttons to moving the earpiece to the edge of the phone, eventually to the point where we have all screen displays and cutouts for cameras. Regardless, those are the 10 necessary innovations that I think are in every, almost every smartphone created today. Wait, real quick, I'm editing right now and I'm realizing that I forgot to mention a few necessary innovations like Bluetooth, NFC, Face ID, and Touch ID sensors. Definitely need those in today's smartphones, but forgot to mention them. Let me know if I forgot any more in the comments below, but let's get back into it. So all that previous innovation that we mentioned happened between 20 to 30 years. So where will the tech in smartphones be in the next 20 and 30 years? My theory is it's not going to change that much. Take cars, for example, from when the first car was created to now, there's been so much change, but a lot of the change started really in the beginning first X amount of years. But in the recent, maybe 20 to 30 years, there hasn't been that much change in what a car has besides the features inside. We have the models. We know what cars look like from the shapes of certain cars. You, you can tell which car this is. Look, take a look at these two cars. For example, if, if I took out the logos, you can probably tell which one is a Honda and which one is a Tesla. And that's kind of where smartphones are. If I were to take off the logos of both of these phones, you can tell which one's a Google phone and you can tell which one's an iPhone pretty clearly. And I think that's where phones are going to be for the next 10 years. I think there's gonna be some time before we see any new innovations in a smartphone that just absolutely wow us and become an essential part of every smartphone. Every phone now has USB-C, that's a great innovation. And if I remember correctly, Apple even shared their MagSafe blueprints for other companies, which is pretty great. 
I can eventually see all smartphones having MagSafe and that's cool too, but I think that's really where we're gonna be for the next so-and-so years. Small innovations like that, that kind of move the needle a little bit forward, but not exactly wowing us to a point of, this is the next new feature. But I could be completely wrong, and I hope I am, because I wanna see what the future of smartphones evolve. One of the things I really hope for in the future, and it's commonly depicted in future movies where it's like phone that is just kind of see-through or it looks kind of holographic. I would love to see that, but I don't know how we're gonna get there from this, where we are now. I don't know how, it's gonna be a big jump to get to that. I just don't know how long that's gonna take, if that's even gonna be possible ever. Like another cool theory that I had was maybe it's a double-sided touchscreen. Like instead of just having one side as a touchscreen and one that isn't, maybe it does become a double-sided touchscreen phone. But, and I know we have some phones that have dual displays and things like that. Foldable phones kind of have that similar concept, but I, I just would be interested to see what that would look like on just a regular non-folding phone. I don't know if it would work well and who knows if it's already been made or been tested and it has failed. In the next 10 to 20 years, I can see our phones really just getting more incremental changes and some new gimmicky innovations that aren't necessarily moving the needle forward. I don't know if we'll get many, if any, necessary innovations that will become a standard for all phones. But let me know what you think. Will phones be more foldable? Will we get Thinner phones, will we get wider phones? Will phones just get consolidated to another device like a tablet or a smartwatch so we don't have the use of a phone at all anymore? I don't know, but those are my hopes that we have more necessary innovations rather than gimmicky innovations and small incremental changes. So yeah, I would love to know your thoughts on what you think, where our phones will be in the next 10 years, maybe 20 years, maybe even 30 years. Will they be the same rectangular phones with touchscreen in the front, cameras on the back, or will they be completely different in the next 10 to 20 years? I'd love to know your thoughts, your theories, and what you hope for in smartphones in the future in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy any of the other videos on our channel. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.